in all stages. The port is close to open. But Dr. Magnus is sure will be in time to stop it. Well, I see the Magnuson device performed flawlessly. I feel compelled to thank you personally for saving my rocket. So, um, thank you. <clears throat> well, that's enough chit-chat. I've got a rocket to launch. <laughs> wow. For a minute there, I thought ready? you were going to get a hug. Check. Let's go to the control room. We can get a great view of the launch from there. What? This one? Flight termination system? Anyway, welcome back to our architecture tour of Half-Life 2. We are close to the end. Actually, I think we are at the end. Final cinematic? Well, here we are again. What does that mean? Here we are again. Does she mean this elevator? It's the same elevator when we first While met. While you were out having fun, I found an old helicopter that I was able to get working. I've got it all packed up and ready to go. Never a dull moment, huh? Right. I'm seeing a payload anomaly of approximately eight and a half pounds. Well, that's what they That's certainly not worth scuffling. We're back! At last. Ah, Gordon. Hell of a job you did out there, son. Let's not forget that with the Magnuson device, those striders practically destroy themselves. Yes. Well, I think perhaps Gordon had something to do with their success. I suggest we adjourn this meeting of the Mutual Admiration Society until after we have launched our rocket. Now, I believe we're ready to start the auto sequence. I believe Gordon should have the honor. You'll hear no objection from me. It's all yours, Gordon. I get to press the big red button. Oh yay. Uh, Just the damn thing. Anyway, I don't know why the opening is shaped like this except to give you a good view of the launch. Well, you gonna push the button? Yep, I don't have anything else to say. Okay. Now it is still too early to celebrate. We need to reach altitude and transmit the signal. Too right. The clock is ticking. We couldn't have cut it any closer if that was our intention. It is going to work, right? It has to. Once the rocket is in range of the portal, we'll be able to switch on the Xenium resonator. Well, let's get outside. I'd like a better view of the fireworks. There should be quite a show. Regrettably, I can't come out with you. Magnuson and I will need to keep a close eye on the rocket's trajectory. Aren't you going to see us off? Just as soon as this is wrapped up. I wouldn't dream of letting you go without a proper goodbye. Okay, I'll hold you to that. You too, Dr. Magnuson. Indeed. Well... Okay. Magnuson almost had an orgasm there. And, uh... Maybe it's not coincidental, you know. We um, demolished the citadel, we castrated the combine, and now we are launching our own little penis metaphor up into the sky. You know, rockets and, and launch and all that, I'm not going to elaborate too much. Interesting. Interesting. So yeah, our penis is definitely bigger than the Combines now, isn't it? Gordon, hold up a second. 
The more I think about that warning from our friend, the more I'm convinced it has to do with Borealis. Don't be deceived. That ship must never be used. You have got to destroy it, whatever the cost. Where are you two? You're gonna miss it. Be right there, Alex. Gordon, thanks for everything you've done. For Alex, for all of us. I couldn't be prouder if you were my own son. Now when you get back, we've got a lot to talk about. Come on! Okay. I'll bet the Combine aren't too happy right now. You got that right, sweetheart. But we've got plenty to celebrate. I wish you didn't have to head off so soon. If only it weren't so critical. It's okay, Dad. We'll find Judith and bring her back. Dog? Hey, where are you? What a nut. Don't go too far. Well, that was cool. There's the rocket. A lot of smoke. Are they supposed to give out that much smoke? And is it supposed to be black? Well, I guess it depends on the rocket fuel. What's this place? Oh, this is the helicopter launch pad. It's quite a big facility, isn't it? Although... Well, I don't know. I don't know anything about Soviet missile silos. Although I did a bit of research. Well, not much. I kind of just typed in ICBM into Wikipedia. And that rocket, it looked like the Titan II missile. I think. But the Titan II is... American. Not Soviet. So I don't know how they... managed to ship a Titan II over to... Eastern Europe. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I'm not sure we are meant to... look at it that closely. And also, the Titan II is like 50% bigger than, than what it was in the game. It's like 30 odd meters tall. And I know you guys are mostly in North America and don't know what meters are. You can look it up. Ooh, helicopter. The shed is quite big considering how small a helicopter is. Although, I guess the rotor blades need room as well. Uh, holes in the ceiling again. Yep, that should be all. Really, it's like it, it shouldn't take that much work to just patch these up. It's just corrugated iron, right? Or some sort of steel panel. Right. Are you sure you have everything you need? I think so. Doctor Kleiner gave us the Borealis coordinates. We'll keep the hailing frequency open on the chopper radio in case Judith tries to reach us again. Good idea. She could well make another attempt. Oh no. Dad! Gordon! Help! Help! Yes. Dad! Alex! Dad! Oh. Get away! Oh, yeah. No! Uh. Dad! Dad! God damn it, let go of him! Uh. Whoa. Uh. Oh my god! I love you, Jack. Close your eyes, honey. I love you, Dad. No! Oh my god! <laughs> Gordon! Uh, uh, 
Well, that was good, wasn't it? Oh, that was well done. That was well done. I mean, not, not, no, I don't mean well done killing Eli. I mean, well done by Valve setting that up and then executing that final scene. Well, let's see. What, what do I have to say about episode two? Like, you know, there's not there's not too much architecture in episode two, and you know, at a at a surface level, it's quite convincing. I mean, what do we see? We went into the mines. Like the mines were very detailed. There were a lot of stuff in it, but I wasn't, and I'm still not sure whether the mines made sense at like tunnels. And I'm sure that, in a way, it didn't make sense at all because most of the mines were very close to the surface. Right, you know, we never went down very far. We were always very close to the surface in the mines. And then we came out, and we got to that industrial facility where there was toxic waste and all that. And there was never any indication of what specific purpose it was. You know, it was just industrial bits. And then after that, there was a farm, a farmhouse and a barn that wasn't actually attached to a farm and then we had the train tracks and then some industrial things which were kind of out in the middle of the wilderness and then after that we had White Forest Inn which you know, it looked fairly good on the outside except when you looked closer the inn didn't actually have any rooms and then we got to the missile facility, and, and I can't say too much about that because I don't know very much about missile facilities. So, you know, at a, at a surface level, and if you're not an architect and if you're not looking very closely, then everything seems okay, you know, everything seems fairly convincing. But if you look closer, then nothing actually makes sense. Like, they're not, they're not real environments, or they're not trying to be, you know, real buildings or real parts of the city or real parts of the wilderness. Or oh, there's the, the valleys as well, like most of the valleys don't seem to make sense in, in a geological sense. Although they looked good. So, so all of the, you know, everything is very shallow. You know, the appearance at first glance looks convincing, but if you look closer, then, then nothing makes sense. And, you know, Half-Life 2, Episode 2, in terms of gameplay and storytelling, and especially you, know, you just saw the ending scene, all of that is quite well done, but what I'm concerned about is that the the really well-considered use of architecture as storytelling elements, they were mostly in the first game, and even then only in very selected parts of the first game, like you know, you arrive at the train station, you first see the, the citadel and then the first bits of the city and the apartments. I mean, and then there were other bits as well. Later on, Nova Prospect I thought was fairly good. And then the bank or museum or something and then another bit. And then the Strider battles in the first, in Half-Life 2. Like those bits I thought were, you know, very good uses of architecture. And Ravenholm as well, I guess. At first it's a bit strange and you're not sure what's going on but by the end of it you you see what's what's happening and it makes sense like that stuff in the first game it didn't seem to carry through into episode 1 and 2 episode 1 especially the hospital made no sense at all like the layout of it and and what i'm thinking is that i don't think people appreciated the 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 time and effort that they put into making the architecture in Half Life Two real, well, well not not real but co convincing and and you know have, making it consistent with what you would expect to find in reality, for the most part to some extent. Obviously, you have to take some liberties to make it work as a game, but I, I think 
you know, it seems to me that that kind of detail and that kind of effort is lost on most people. Most people don't see it, and they don't recognize it, and they don't realize it's there. And then they, and so then, when Valve made arch episode one and episode two, the architecture, you know, it didn't matter. They, or they they think that it didn't matter, because most people would play through the game and then, and not notice it. And indeed, you know, the first one or two times that I played through all three games, I didn't really look very closely at the architecture. And maybe that's a bad thing, in the sense that, you know, because people don't notice the details, then Valve feels like they don't need to put in the details. You know, why make White Forest in have proper rooms if people are never going to notice that, you know, the space between the door and the windows, in the like the doors were were always locked, that like you couldn't go into the rooms. But if you looked at it, you know, that there was no space in there. <laughs> like, like there was windows on one side and door on the other, but there's no space in between, so there's not actually a room in that space. Like people don't notice. And if people don't notice, then then why why bother making it? You know, why don't I just make it easier for yourself and and just design the game as a game and design the hotel as a place for you to get ambushed and not worry about the rooms? I don't know. I I, I wonder if that's a. I mean, on the one hand, I I think well, it doesn't matter. It's a game, right? But on the other hand. I feel that there's a chance that opportunities may be lost if you are not, you know, motivated or you're not you don't have any incentive to consider the the architecture in, in that much detail. By that I mean, you know, if the game designers are have no incentive to consider the architecture in that much detail then Maybe some opportunities are lost. You know, there there might be unexpected things that will come out of being more careful with the architecture, which you wouldn't even notice, or which you wouldn't even even realize that those opportunities were there if you don't think, you know, it's even necessary to to look at it in that much detail. I don't know. I'm kind of rambling, I guess. So yeah, anyway, I look forward to episode 3, like everyone else basically, everyone's looking forward to episode 3. And uh, I don't think it'll come out for quite some time yet. Anyway, that has been an architecture tour of Half-Life 2. I hope you enjoyed it. And um, yeah, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys further along with other projects. See you later.